I'd love to start off just with got, what got you started in meditation. How did you start? I had an unusual. First of all, if you think of what a meditation teacher might be, you know, you traditionally, I ain't that guy. You know, I'm a skeptical guy. I love science. I'm not into woo-woo or new age stuff. And actually, my upbringing was politics. I actually, I had worked for Bobby Kennedy, and I wanted to be a United States senator. I wanted to change the world. But in those days, in the late 60s, politics, pretty much what it is today, was pretty destructive. And I thought, I gotta change the world through politics and, and still have any sense of integrity in my own life. So I got into education, and I was thinking to get a doctor in educational curriculum and work with kids one at a time. A friend of mine told me, you know, Bob, you're kind of stressed. You might want to learn something called Transcendental Meditation. I went, not on your life. How old were you about? Uh, 18. Mm. Not on your life. You know, it wasn't oh. even a word in my vocabulary. But he said, forget what the word means. Just say technique X. Just, it'll give your body deep rest. Wake up your brain, you'll have more resilience to handle the stress, you'll be better memory, better focus, and I learned it. And one of my first thoughts after I learned it was so immediate for a really skeptical kid. I thought, oh, I'd like to teach this to kids. I was wondering, I wouldn't, oh, I want to get enlightened, was I want to teach this to kids, and that was 48 years ago. And, what time and of I day started you... meditating when I was 60, so you do the math. No. <laughs> I mean, what time of day? That was a joke. Were you... <laughs> you laugh, guys. Laugh at the guy. 48, 60. <laughs> um, what time of day were you doing this? Were you doing this whenever? I mean, no, it's done. It, the meditation, yeah, the, it, the TM. First of all, the word meditation is a generic term. and Yeah, we'll get into yeah, TM, yeah. but just right. in the basics. It's done in the morning for 20 minutes to start the day and then done again in the afternoon or early evening at the end of the day, first thing in the morning to wake up the brain and make you more resilient and clearer for throughout the day and then at the end of the day to get rid of the stress. So you enjoy your dinner and friends and study and then sleep at much, much better at night. And when did you start that process? When I was 18. Mm. And then I you became- You haven't stopped since? No, or? I've been doing it 20 minutes twice a day. Uh, it's like someone said, wow, you've been, meditating for all those years, and I said, well, I've been brushing my teeth for longer than that. It's not, the word meditation, and I, uh, well, I know we'll get to it, but it's such a generic term, and people have so many misunderstandings. TM, as it's called, is this, it's like a little effortless mental exercise, and it's not a shtick. Mm. So I just do it like everything else, like brushing my teeth or exercising or anything. Mm. And, and tell me how you started to get connected to uh, David Lynch and with the foundation. Well, David has been, Twin Peaks, David, um, has been... Iconic filmmaker, obviously. People know yeah, his work. Yeah. David had been uh, meditating himself since he started um, Eraserhead. Mm. And our paths crossed in Los Angeles because I'd been meditating a long time and he'd been meditating a long time. And I was wanting to bring uh, the meditation to inner city school kids. Mm. And we became friends. And I said... David, let's start a foundation. Let's raise the money so you can bring we can bring TM teachers into the toughest schools mm -hmm. in New York and Oakland. And he said, fine. So we started a foundation and raised the money. And now we're 12 years later. Now 600,000 kids have learned to meditate through the work of the foundation and veterans and women and children who are survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. Can we give a round of applause for that? That's beautiful. I love the work that you're doing. I mean... Can you tell me a little bit about how you first started? I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge goal. That's a huge, to change anything in the school system. I mean, that's an ambitious task. How did you first start with David? People have been uh, meditating, practicing TM for like 60 years. And it had been in some school principals. It's a great question. So school principals had been meditating and medical doctors um, know, knew the devastating impact of stress and trauma not only on just our lives, but these kids in these crime-ridden neighborhoods. And there's a lot of talk and a lot of conferences about how important TM could be for kids. And then, uh, you know, I still had the desire to change the world, just not through politics. And so I asked David if we could start this foundation. And the, the funny story is, he said, yeah. And I said, can I write a press release about it? And he said, yeah. And so I sent out a press release thinking that David Lynch is going to start a foundation to bring meditation to kids, thinking nothing was going to happen. Ha. <laughs> Two days later, it was on People the front page of you know, every newspaper. And he called me up and he said, what's a 501c3, which is a nonprofit organization? And I didn't actually know. Mm. 
So the idea just came. There was no five-year plan. It was, oh, my God, here's children who are suffering. Mm -hmm. Here's veterans who are suffering from traumatic stress. Here's women who are suffering. Here's a technique mm -hmm. that is, according to science, more effective than any pill in reducing, in healing stress, and uh, in healing trauma and reducing stress, and it's not getting to them. Mm. So the foundation was launched, and now we're in schools all over New York City, in Los Angeles, in Chicago, in Washington, D.C. We have an office in Washington. I'm actually teaching members of Congress on both sides of the aisle. There's people. That's very the helpful, I'm sure. We need more of that. Let's get some more meditation in there. That would <laughs> Real, be very I mean, helpful. Really, really. And there's a lot of uh, openness. The, you know, there's that sort of thing of, you think of meditation, om, and you know, you're sitting in a full lotus. And, mm. But that's not this. This is medically sound transcendental meditation. This is something you can do in the back seat of a car. You can do this you know, anywhere, and it gives your body this profound rest, eliminates the buildup of stress, and so it's practical. And who'd have thunk 20, 40 years ago that an antidote to the problems of stress in modern world would be something that's over 6,000 years old? So ancient, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you spoke about meditation and what people think when they hear that word. Um, let's talk about mantra. That's another word that people throw around. They don't really know what it means. Can you ex describe what it is in TM and in meditation in general to you? Can I do it first before I take Absolutely. I talk? All right, I want to say, so it used to be thought, and you cut me off at any time. Uh, this, is a, this is a two hour answer. This is your, right this is your chat. Two sir. hour the floor answer. Is yours. I want everybody to settle in. <laughs> no. Um, for a long time, the word meditation, I mean, 30, 40 years ago, the word meditation, people just thought it was just hogwash, you know, just you know, stupid. And then there was some initial research, and then people thought, yeah, meditation is good, but all meditations are the same. So it doesn't matter, you know, my meditation is jogging, my meditation is listening to classical music, I do breathing exercise, I clear my mind, I use a mantra. They thought it was all the same. Well, now brain research has come along and sh said, there's a lot of junk meditations out there, but there's three legitimate approaches to meditation. The word meditation just means thinking. So one type of meditation thinking is concentration meditation, where you try and cl clear your mind of thoughts. You want a calm mind, so stop all this monkey mind. So that's called focused attention. It's very difficult to clear your mind of thoughts. Second type of meditation is a mindfulness. Some people have heard of mindfulness. And, and that, Charles, is an observational meditation where you're just sort of watching your thoughts and trying to be dispassionate. And in the analogy is an ocean, waves on the surface of the ocean, and the depth of the ocean is silent. So that's playing around with the waves. In transcendental meditation, we recognize that there's a vertical dimension to the mind. You have a sense of, I feel deeply about that thing. I, I, I love that person deeply. There's a sense of depth. And so in TM, we use a mantra, which is a word or a sound that has no meaning. It's a nice sound, nice sound. Mm -hmm. And you're taught how to use it by a trained teacher silently. You do it silently. It just sits like this. You don't have a mic in your hand necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, and you think the mantra, and everything settles down. And when your mind settles down, your body gets deep rest. People say to me, well, how do you know transcendental meditation? How do you know when your time, 20, it's done 20 minutes, how do you know when your time is up? I say, look at your watch. Mm. You know, it's not, you're not going anywhere, you're just settling down. Mm. Amazing, and, and you spoke a little bit about how David's involvement got some more eyeballs. I mean, again, through David and, and through your guys' work, a lot of names have come out saying they use this process. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld is that very outspoken about it. Um, you know, uh, Hugh Jackman and also, can you speak a little bit about some of those success stories and, and what you've heard from these people? And I feel like a lot of people out there, they, they don't want to jump into anything until they've seen it work for somebody. That's just the nature of us. Yeah, and they should. Mm -hmm. People should be very skeptical about, I'm a very skeptical person, I mean, about a lot of things. It's, and, um, so the thing is, is in the process of working to bring TM to these underserved populations, somehow the word spread, and so well-known people also are under a lot of stress. In the case of Jerry Seinfeld, he actually started meditating when he was 20 or 17, and he'd been doing it, 1972, he'd been doing it his whole life. But then Jerry started talking to Howard Stern, who has been meditating since he was 17. And then the word spread, and then, Nine years ago, we did a concert at Radio City Music Hall to raise money to teach a million kids to meditate, and the Beatles, the remaining Beatles, 
Paul and Ringo were there, and then Eddie Vedder, and all these people. And then the word just, Charles just spread. And so then one person tells another, tells another. And I think what's interesting is, I'm going to name drop here. Um, I taught Ellen DeGeneres to meditate. Now, I never knew any famous per I'm just a meditation teacher, and so now I'm sitting in front of Ellen DeGeneres, and I ask her, why did she want to learn to meditate? And she paused, and she smiled, and she said, because I want to maintain permanent connection with the intelligence that runs the universe. And I thought, whoa. That's deep. <laughs> and That's then she deep. paused, and she said, and I can't sleep at night. Mm. And I realized that people do TM for two reasons. We do want to grow. Nobody wants to feel stale in their own life. Nobody wants to feel like they're spinning their wheels in a relationship, in their job, inside ourselves. It's just it's suffocating. So when you access, when you transcend, and med when you experience that silence, you grow. At the same time, that deep rest gets rid of the stress that stops us from growing, that keeps us awake at night, that doesn't allow our memory to be as sharp. So it, it in one stroke, you get both. So I think that's... To get to the top, there was another name drop, Katy Perry. Mm. I asked her once, she was on a tour, and I said, how's it going? And she said, um, it's a lot easier to get to the top than it is to stay there. Mm. So if you get burned down, I'm sure of it. You get burned out, and, and the creativity, you need new creativity, new ideas, new ideas. And she said meditation saved her life, because mm. you're constantly refreshing yourself from inside. Mm. As a writer. I'll teach you. As a, yeah, as a, Please, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I teach all no, of us. No, as a writer, same thing. Mm. You, you, you want that sort of... And that's why David Lynch is so great, because mm. he's got 45 years of meditating, and every film is bizarre and different. And he's doing acting appearances on yeah. top of that yeah. and sharing you know, stories and that. In his home in Los Angeles, he has he's like a kid. He's got a film studio, a sound studio, a sculpture studio, a painting studio... Um, he does a woodworking, and he just gets up in the morning. He's so creative. He does this for two hours, and he does that for two hours. It's like like an ideal life for a 16-year-old kid <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't have to go to school. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. I think, obviously, in this day and age, are you seeing um, more difficulty getting people into meditation in this day and age where we're so connected to our phones, so uh, you know, waiting for the next tweet, the next social media post? I feel like now is, is it, it's more important than ever. It's another great question. I think now people well, there's a there's more interest in 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 transcendental meditation and meditation in general than there's ever been. And I think there's three reasons. I think the problem of stress is greater. You know, we feel it. We the noise. We can't stop it. It's just going, and it keeps us awake at night. I call it the gotta 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 mind. So there's and the effect of stress on our body we understand from science more than ever. It's killing us aging us. Second reason, so that's one. The second reason why there's so much interest is there's no pill. There's no magic pill you can take to prevent yourself from getting stressed out of your mind when you wake up in the morning and you got to get, you're on the FDR or you're under pressure with an exam. There's no pill. And there's no pill you can take if you're stressed. We mask it and we, ma we mask it with six cups of coffee and four glasses of wine, hopefully not at the same time, <laughs> although. <laughs> and, um, or we manage it with Xanax and Ambien and all that stuff, but it, the tumor of stress is growing. And so that's the second reason. And the third reason why there's so much interest and in why it's actually easier now to get people to meditate than ever before is because there's so much science. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you used the word meditation. People go, ay, ay, ay. And now it's just they know there's so much data, hundreds of studies published in all the top journals. And now, you know, we're, we're funded to, to work with veterans at, through the Department of Defense. And, the, you know, that's solid stuff. The, mm. the Department of Defense giving millions of dollars to study the effects of TM. They don't pull the trigger on anything lightly. No. Literally or figuratively. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little wordplay there. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about um, you know, the science that you mentioned, the, the yeah. science that you referenced? Can you give us some stats, sure. some of the things that have come out recently? Yeah. Um, so there's a connection between the mind and the body. If you're anxious about something in your mind, you know, your body's tense. 
during transcendental meditation, your anxious, agitated thinking mind up here, the surface of the ocean, just settles down, just comfortably, gently. When that happens, your body gains this deep state of rest. The research shows the rest you gain, that is gained during 20 minutes of the meditation is actually deeper than the deepest point of deep sleep that takes five and a half or six hours to get to. Now, the result of that, you've ever heard of cortisol? Cortisol is this horrible, well, we need cortisol, but we need that much, not Natural, that much. Yeah. yeah. And cortisol uh, is secreted by the adrenal glands when we're anxious. Adrenals sit on the kidneys, makes us feel anxious, compromises our memory, compromises the immune system, why a stressed person gets sick more often. If you get a good night's sleep, cortisol levels drop like 10%. In 20 minutes of this meditation, they drop 30 to 40%. It's unheard of. There's no pill that can do that. And it's not magic. It's accessing a mechanism in the nervous system that we never knew we had, but people 5,000 years ago knew. Mm. And now it's, it's saving us today. So, and there's research, you know, reduced high blood pressure, reduced anxiety, depression. I work with Michael J. Fox and Parkin he has Parkinson's. We're about to start a study at Johns Hopkins University on the effects of this meditation on Parkinson's. When he meditates, all of his tremors stop. So pre-onset Alzheimer's, as well as ADD, ADHD, autism, lots. You mentioned going into schools. You mentioned the VA and, and also survivors. Can you talk a little bit about some of the real life stories that you've heard back from people having to deal with these traumas and, and how it's helped them? I'll tell you one story that um, is very moving to me that I heard. So the foundation's 12 and a half years old, and this happened within a year or two. We were in a school in, 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 uh, on the West Coast, and it was at one of the most violent neighborhoods. And the way it works is that kids meditate for 10 minutes to start the day in part of in class mm -hmm. and 10 minutes at the end of the school day in class and it's for learning readiness it wakes up their brain and their but so the way this school did it was all the kids had to be in class by the time the first period bell rang or else they'd have to meditate they couldn't meditate in the class they have to meditate in the hallway well this one little girl came running in 3 minutes late i heard this from the teacher out of breath she sits down everybody's meditating and she sits down out of breath and the teacher came over and we'll just say her name, Charlene whispered, you're gonna have to meditate outside. You know, you're late, it's late. And she stood up and she had a white dress on and she had dark red spattered paint, paint splattered all over her dress. And the teacher, Dennis said, and you're also gonna have to have your mother bring a new dress because you can't come here like that. And she started to sob and it was not paint. She had been standing next to her uncle at a bus stop and he was shot in a drive-by shooting and it was his blood. And this little girl had nowhere safe to run except school. Not home, not friends, and she didn't want to miss the meditation because it was a sanctuary. It was a and so that happens now with thousands and thousands of children all over the world. And for under this is why we have the David Lynch Foundation. They didn't do anything wrong. So we just want to bring this to them. And as far as veterans go, Veterans come back from combat, harm's way. They can't sleep an hour or two a night for months. You, you, I mean, you've read this, you know this, and they wake up in cold sweats and their violent behavior, and, and they don't want to be that way. Two years ago, they weren't that way. And they come and they learn to TM, and they're skeptical and they're doubtful, and, and within a day or two, because anyone can learn this, they're sleeping through the night. And it's not a miracle. It's the power of the human nervous system. Amazing. Uh, I hear you're working on a book. Can you describe yes, a little bit yes, about yeah, what that's yeah. about? It's called Strength in Stillness, The Power of Transcendental Meditation. It's coming out, um, Simon & Schuster. Not, it's coming out in February, but it's online now for pre-order at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And it's a short little book because I don't like big, if you read it, you see a big book on meditation, you think, oh my God, I have to read this whole sucker. I'm never going <laughs> to, too complicated for me. It's like, yeah. Most books are 100,000. Intimidating, books. absolutely. Intimidating. And this is just short. It's got good stories, some of the stories I just told. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a sign of the times because 10 years ago, Simon & Schuster never would have published it. And now it's like a main listing. So I'm going to be traveling all over talking about it, which makes me very happy. 
Uh, how can people get involved, and, and what would you say to people who don't have time? I know you guys have some fundraising galas. You guys just had one uh, recently. What was that like? It sounded oh, like yeah. a good time. <laughs> we had an event at the Plaza Hotel. We have periodically, we have concerts. We have for all different ages, and this was the Plaza Hotel in New York to raise money to teach um, a 1,000 veterans in New York City to meditate. Amazing cause. Yeah, and um, Tom Hanks and Mary Louise Parker are both meditators, and... Um, I was interviewing them as part of the evening's thing, and there's... It's just a, a, a Tom Hanks soundbite, please. You have to. Well, he did a brilliant imitation of uh, <laughs> Donald Trump meditating. No one's better. I'm the greatest. Oh, man, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, yeah. No, if you do, if you look up Tom Hanks, David Lynch Foundation, there's some, you, you'll see some words about it on uh, Google. They, they have it. It was great. And we do these things all the time. And all these wonderful people step forward to raise funds so we can teach TM for free to at-risk populations. In fact, my book, 100% of the proceeds that I get are going to teach kids and veterans and women to meditate for free. That's incredible. Round of applause for that. And then we're going to throw the questions out in the audience. So yes, let's have our first question. A round of applause for Charles for asking such really good oh, questions. please. No, no, no. Don't worry about that. Just ask a question. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you have any advice for people who have trouble staying awake during meditation. Well, it all depends upon the type of meditation you're doing. If it's a focused attention sort of meditation, that can be difficult to stay awake. In transcendental meditation, um, because it settles the mind down, it's actually, that's a state of wakeful, inner wakefulness. So it's actually easier to stay awake with TM. But if you do fall asleep for a minute or two, it's not a bad thing. It just means your body was desperate for sleep. <laughs> if you fall asleep, it's not bad. It's like, well, maybe your body's trying to tell you something. Go to bed earlier. Listen to that for sure. Next question. Hi. It's been proven time after time again that when you replace detention with meditation in schools, kids actually get rid of this aggression and you could possibly argue that a whole new generation of peaceful people could arise. Why hasn't more schools or prisons for that matter been uh, adapting these approaches and what will it take for us to really take examples of some of the European countries who are doing it and kind of like spread the word and do it on a greater scale to really help um, all the violence that's happening. It's a beautiful question. Do I have like three minutes? One go minute? for it. Go oh. for it. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to give you a little back. The times are changing fast. So two years ago, the University of Chicago Crime Lab, which is a premier, an education lab, which is a premier research institution, put out a request for proposals in Chicago for community organizations help us do something to reduce the violence in these schools. I mean, it, it, Chicago is a war zone. So 220 organizations submitted proposals, and the crime lab selected three. And the David Lynch Foundation was one of them. And they had seen the data that showed that this meditation reduced violence in schools and increased graduation rates and, and improved health. And so they gave us $300,000 a lot of money, and we taught the meditation, the quiet time in several schools. It was supposed to be a several year study, but the results were so profound in the first year, they fast forwarded and gave us a million dollars last year to bring it to more schools, and this year the budget is $2.6 million, and the Cribe Lab wants to duplicate it in New York City, and now we're talking to people about Washington, D.C., and Los Angeles. My answer to you is time and research. If the data is there, the need is so huge, and if the data is incontrovertible, that even the most skeptical person, or person, oh, meditation, that's a religion, which of course it's not. So it, the times will change with data. And also, sometimes it's just time. Someone, this is not a nice thing to say, but someone said, science progresses one funeral at a time. <laughs> and sometimes it's just a generation. You know, I hate to... I, love that generation, but you know, it's just a new gen, because the younger generation, meditation's great. Mm. My parents' generation, bizarroville. Mm. So I think it's just more research and the need is so great. We're also working with opioid addiction. I mean, we're to working with the government because they're, it's an epidemic and nothing's working. Veterans, nothing's working. Isn't it interesting? Something that's over five or 6,000 years old, that's common to every human being, access the level of calm that already exists inside of you. It's there. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to, it's there. We're just stuck up here. Mm. Access that and anyone can do it. 
and you can change lives, and you're right, you can save a generation, not just save a generation, create a new, a new world. Mm. Amazing, one last question. Hey, um, is TM better indoors or outdoors? TM better indoors or outdoors? TM is better wherever you can do it. I will say that um, I generally I prefer meditating indoors because it's just quieter and calmer. Two quick stories. The first time I learned to meditate, I went, I just learned, and I was going to school, and my sister was also at the same university, and I thought, I'll go over there and I'll do my afternoon meditation at her place. But I didn't want to tell her I was meditating, so she had this, her apartment had a outdoor hill and there was a deck and I thought I'll just go out there and sit and meditate for 20 minutes in nature and I got bit by about a million mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. So that was my first realization that uh, it's not necessarily better outdoors. And the other time was I remember meditating and the, in a fr there was a sorority right next door and they were just blasting some Rolling Stones album when I was met, which doesn't matter, you it's can do helpful. it. Yeah, but then I thought, well, this weekend I'm gonna be hiking in the Sierras, then it's gonna be quiet. Nature's not quiet. I mean, the, <laughs> caw, caw. the beautiful thing about this meditation, noise is not an obstacle. So wherever it's most comfortable. Mm. Well guys, check out the David Lynch Foundation, and then the name of the book again, Bob, please. Strength in Stillness, Strength in Stillness, and also just in general, tm.org. TM.org would just tell you if you're interested in learning. And it's a nonprofit organization. And I'm really grateful to be here. I really enjoyed this very much. And I really appreciate it. Yeah, check it out, guys. And try meditating today. Absolutely. Bob Roth, one more time, guys.